Hey my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from Bahati Life. For those of you guys that don't know, thank you so much for tuning in. We are in a weird, um, not weird, but new environment and I hope you guys dig it because I dig it. If you hear any noise in the background, it's because it's semi-public and I live in a spot that is, or can be, kind of loud. So hopefully there won't be any noise or distractions. But we will be talking today about the full moon eclipse, which is happening in the sign of Cancer, and this is going to be on January 10th, 2020. So I pulled the chart. Technically, this full moon is happening at 2.23, but the time that I have the chart pulled at is 2.22, and I did that for my own special reasons, just because when you see the number 2.22 in general, it brings the energy of things kind of working together cohesively, and the interesting thing about that is that at the time of this full moon, there's so much pressure that is happening for all of us, not only in our personal lives, but we're seeing this globally. I almost feel like a broken record because I keep saying the same things again and again and again that, you know, with Pluto and Saturn and now Jupiter moving to the sign of Capricorn, I mean, there's this highlight and focus on business and government and politics and the earth because that's where these energies are concentrating but that's where these planets are concentrating their energy on at this point in our lives. So we kind of have to work with that. But if you know me, and if you know me by now, you'll know that I feel like you can take any challenge, any transit, and make it work for you versus against you if you know what it is that you're working with. And that's the point of this video. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So like I was saying, this eclipse is happening in the sign of Cancer. For those of you guys that don't know, Cancer is all about the energy of nurturing. It's about family it's where you belong it's your I, your emotional idea and belief that you are safe that you are secure that you are sound it is trying to teach you how to nourish yourself but when we have an eclipse we have the moon on one side and we have the sun on the other so we have feminine energy and we have masculine energy masculine is the sun and the sun blasts its light onto the the full moon or onto the moon making it full and in that moment we are totally stripped of all of our masks of all the things that we tried to hide behind like our ego it's just an emotionally raw sensitive vulnerable time where you are allowed to observe yourself flaws and all for who you are or circumstances around you become very clear and apparent as to what it is that they are so these energies are happening in such a vulnerable and such a um i want i don't want to say stoic but it's almost like you know when you have people who are very comfortable with being sensitive and then you have other people who are not comfortable with being sensitive and don't like to show um, the softer sides of themselves that's technically the energy that it is that we're working with so when the Sun falls in the sign of Capricorn and is showing people how to be strong and how to be stable and how to not disconnect from your emotions but not allow them to rule your life that's what it is that we're seeing is we're learning how to balance both of those sides in order to create balance within ourselves so Add on to that the fact that Pluto and Saturn are literally conjunct each other at the time of this full moon. If you have a mindset or if you have a belief system that does not support you and does not make you feel stable and secure, it's more than your idea of safety and security. It's are you actually safe here? Do you actually belong here? Is this your lifestyle, the choices that you're making, do they support you not only for now but for the long haul? This is kind of the part where I've been feeling like a broken record because I, I truly have been saying the same thing, that the energy of the planets and how they have been has not been a temporary situation, it's very long term. That's always how Saturn is. That's always how Capricorn is because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and Pluto is one of those planets that is all about creating personal transformation and destroying things that do not serve you, that take away your power, that are manipulating you in the sense that it, it strips you of your strength, strips you of your ability to feel powerful and to feel like you're making a positive aspect or an, a positive change in your environment and in your life. Sometimes when we think about power and control, we get a little uncomfortable because we're like, you know, to be powerful is a bad thing know your intention like what is your intention is your intention for good or is your intention for bad that decides something is good or bad in your life okay hold on 
There's one word that comes to me while I'm looking at the chart and that is the word revolution. And I feel as though that is a really perfect word to come through for this um, reading message for you guys because really what's happening is we are totally getting revolutionized. We're not only seeing this in our personal lives, but we're seeing this in our world. The powers that be or businesses, if they're not constructive, if they're not benefiting the whole, if they are abusing or manipulating their power or their control, then it's gonna get revolutionized. It has to undergo this pressure, this heat, in order to change. If it wasn't under this pressure and this heat, it wouldn't change, it would stay the same, and nothing would, you know, the status quo stays the same, and that becomes our normal. This energy of abuse, or this mindset of abuse, or not doing the right thing becomes the new normal, becomes dysfunctional, chaotic, and unhealthy, toxic. So what's happening is that at the time of this eclipse, these powers are getting revolutionized, but in your personal life, there's things within your life that are gonna get revolutionized. This is all happening to make sure that you know who you are to your core. There's a lot of emphasis on the root chakra and the sacral chakra, and this is our ability to know that we are safe, know who we are, and ask for more, and to not settle for crumbs. Sometimes with the root chakra, if there's an off, if there's something off balance, we feel like we have to settle for less, or we're constantly in the state of like survival mode, not realizing that there's more out there for us. But it's our mindset, it's our belief system that teaches us, okay, this is as good as it can get, and it's wrong for you to ask for more. Or it almost can make you afraid of your power or afraid of being in a position of power because you feel like power is evil, or maybe you're afraid to ask for money because you feel like money is evil. No, it's your intention behind it, like I was saying. So these are things that are getting pushed to the forefront and all of this is for your highest and greatest good. So I'm looking at the chart and something that really stands out to me is Neptune moving through the sign of Pisces. And what happens with Neptune moving through the sign of Pisces, which Neptune rules Pisces, so this planet is very comfortable here, is that all over the world we're getting more and more sensitive and what happens is that when you become more and more sensitive you become more and more aware and observant of your environment and how those things impact you and how those things make you feel this is a part of the revolution because you are becoming more sensitive to energies and you're realizing that they are toxic that they are draining that they don't serve you and those are things that are working to kind of strip you of your power. As Neptune is sitting here in the sign of Pisces, now for those of you guys who are like, wait, why are we bringing this in, Jess? Why are you talking about um, Neptune sitting in the sign of Pisces when this eclipse is happening in the sign of Cancer? Um, well, because it's the whole chart that it is that I'm reading. It's not just one area. I can't just hyper-focus on one thing and ignore all of the other things that are contributing factors into what is it you're going to experience within your own life or to explain why it is that you're feeling the way that is that you're feeling so that's why we're talking about it so the full moon like i was saying in the beginning it kind of strips off this mask and says like this is who you are you can't avoid it you can't ignore it if you felt comfortable ignoring it before you were trying to avoid it because to see it would mean that you would have to make changes <laughs> which can make you uncomfortable this is the time where it's like, listen, at the time of the eclipse, it's, you know, times that full moon, that stripping away of, you know, the facade, times that by three, times that by six, because this, all of this becomes pushed up to the forefront and it's unavoidable. You can't ignore it any longer. Just like the government and politics and um, our planet, like the focus on how we're treating the planet becomes a highlighting focus. That's what it is that you're seeing in your personal life is that there's areas of your life that are not conducive to the health of your mind, body, soul, spirit long term. So those are things that you have to feel the pressure of it in order for you to make that change, in order for you to make that shift. Pressure is a really perfect word to describe what's going on here because with when we have Saturn and Pluto, these planets are very, very heavy. So when they come together and all of their weight is in one spot in your chart, in one spot in your life, you cannot <laughs> pretend like it doesn't exist because the, the heaviness of it, the weight of it, is just sitting there at this point, at that, at that moment in your life. Oh my God, so that's a lot, right? So then I have to look at Mars because Mars is about our drive, our action, and what we're able to do and how we're able to do it. Mars is moving to the sign of Sagittarius, and this says, listen, 
I'm going to make moves, I'm going to make power moves for my, my, my healing, for the betterment of myself. Why? Because Mars is trying Chiron. Chiron is the point in the chart that is connected to healing, but it's the spot where you find the most suffering, the most wounds that you can then, you know, put um, an emphasis on, okay, this is, knowing that this is here, this is how I can heal it, this is how I can change it. Chiron is sitting in the sign of Mars, um, in the sign of Aries. Aries is, okay, I have to make this about me. I have to put the focus on myself in order to create positive change, finally. Mars rules Aries, trining that in the sign of Sagittarius, and it makes this this move, this bold move, it makes it forward, it makes it assertive, it makes it apparent in your life, but it also makes it optimistic and supports it. So you're able to make these changes, feel these changes, and make a positive move, but you have to open your mind. You have to keep your mind open because, again, it's like these belief systems, this life, the, not only say lifestyle, but the way that you think, the way that you express yourself, this information that is that you're taking in is starting to shift and change because your perspective is starting to shift and change because you're starting to see more. These are things, this is information that's gonna be presented to, de presented to you and brought into your life, but these are things that you're gonna find on your own through your spiritual studies, through your travels, through your research, through your friends, through your social network. All of these things are presenting themselves to you now. Lastly, I wanna to talk to you guys about the word nourishment. Sometimes when we think of the word nourishment, we think about what it is that we are consuming, what it is that we're eating, but it's more than just physical consumption of food and those types of things that your body is able to use in order to nourish itself, but it's spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and also physically. So remember how I was saying with Neptune moving through the sign of Pisces, we're becoming more hypersensitive to certain things. So you might actually observe how your diet is changing, how your energy is changing around certain people. You might actually be branching out of your neighborhood from your uh, original tribe, your OG friends, to finding different people, finding yourself gravitating toward different people of different lifestyles, different cultures, different belief systems that now resonates with this new version of you, this new you. So as you're doing that, your taste in music changes, your activities, your, your, what you're normally interested in, those things change because your body needs to be nourished in different ways. So that's something that I want you guys to set intention for at the time of this full moon eclipse is um, to connect with your third eye, to connect with the divine, to speak to you, to say, okay, this is what you need in order to feel nourished. If you are not nourished, you are not going to be able to thrive. You might be able to survive, but you're not going to be able to thrive. And when we have a full moon in Cancer, Cancer says, okay, this is where you belong, but we want to make sure that you are safe. We want to make sure that you're nourished and supported so that to the root of who you are, you're able to be successful, you're able to grow, you're able to make a positive impact. Um, earlier on in this week, I did a video about how these energies are kind of shifting and changing. And as they change, I'm actually seeing it as an exchange. So anything that you're letting go of or anything that the universe is kind of pushing, <laughs> literally pressuring out, like pushing out of your life, it, something else gets pushed back in and that's kind of the exchange here so make sure that anything that you're allowing to come into your energy field is something that is nourishing you and this is something that literally only you can can say that it makes you feel good or it makes you feel bad as I'm saying that it there's a, a really strong need for me to tell you guys that anytime when you're entering into a new environment there's always like a, a healthy level of like uncomfortableness like it's new energy, it's a new diet, it's a new lifestyle. So it requires you to be consistent with it. That's something that this eclipse is gonna teach you is how to be consistent, how to honor your commitments, how to keep showing up for yourself or for someone else, whatever your responsibility is, to keep showing up because that is going to help you to get into this new routine, this new lifestyle, this new mindset. The, the things that I can say for you guys to set intention for are areas of the home environment, your ability to know your worth, to know your value, to not settle for less, to ask for more. So this can sometimes translate into money and abundance, security, your work, but also um, feeling at home, comfortable in your environment. So you have a safe space to kind of retreat back to back to when you know you're out traveling the world or you're out doing these things that you have a safe spot that is all your own that you can um, you know, go to that you can recharge your batteries and kind of hit the reset button. You have to have a spot that is all your own that is comfortable for you. 
the other thing that I am seeing that you guys set intention for is for um, emotional peace, emotional security, emotional stability. Sometimes this can come from, well, absolutely, at a base level, it's about being able to pay your, pay your rent, pay your bills, but you have to ask for a little bit more than just that. Um, but then also, it's like, you know, having the ability, having balance so that you can enjoy peace and quiet, so that you can enjoy a comfortable lifestyle, so you can do the things that is that you want to do, so that you can feel comfortable. Also, set intention that you guys know your power, that you know who you are, and that you're not afraid of your own personal power. These are things that it is that I'm seeing within the chart that I can speak clearly for you guys, okay? So I hope that that all makes sense. Um, I know that you guys ask a lot of times, like, Jess, what are the things that I can ask what are the things that I should be setting intention for? Well, I can only guide you 50% of the way. I can tell you some things I can see within the chart, but more than that, I really want you guys to connect with your own intuition, your own third eye, because there's things that you can see that I can't see because these readings are general, but there's also things that the divine will speak to you and say, listen, ask us for this because we want to prepare you for this. There's something specific. There's a desire in your heart that I embedded in you that you know of that it's time for you to ask that and speak that out now. One last thing that I get a lot of questions on is, is it a bad thing to set intention during the eclipses? Absolutely not. <laughs> eclipses are portals of incredible change. You should feel comfortable in speaking out to the universe and speaking out to the divine and communicating the things that is that you want. And if anything in your environment changes and is erratic, or disrupts or there's chaos, then it's okay for you to adjust and to flow with that and to not be afraid of that. So you setting intention for the things that is that you want to want in your life is not a bad thing when everything around you is changing. And if you feel the need to change your intention, you're perfectly capable of doing that. Nothing is set in stone. If your mind is set on one thing and you're focused on one thing, then that is where the focus will be driven towards, whether that be for good or for bad. Um, so even if things start, you know, disrupting or getting weird or wonky, you can change and adjust according to what's going on around you, okay? So I hope that that answers you guys' questions. I hope that that makes sense. If you have any questions or you need to reach out to me, you know, by all means, leave me a comment down below. Or you can email me at info at Bahati Life. God bless you. <laughs> and I will, oh, and make sure that you guys... <laughs> Make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.